Okay, so in today's episode we will be taking a look at memory extreme overclocking or well mainly extreme cooling on the memory. So recently my very good friend in Poland, so Barks, has been designing brand new memory heatsinks mainly designed for A2 PCB Samsung B die based memory sticks as well as a brand new memory LM2 container and I I was one of the first people to obtain those. So uh, here's the brand new memory LN2 container. It's called the Honeycomb RAM LN2 pot. It's made out of a single piece of copper, so it's a very large memory LN2 container compared to the more standard ones. And it has a lot of internal design. So this one should be very good for maintaining memory sticks at a steady temperature. If you had memory sticks that really that really have to be uh, kept at, at some specific temperature level or even for just full pot temperatures if you run let's say uh, power chip based DDR3 memories on LN2 and you aim for full pot temperatures that's definitely a good one. I have mostly been using just these more standard ones like the EKSF3D uh, triple point EVO as well as this uh, simple ECO version from Barks. They are just all right, but uh, they are a bit too low, as in not very tall. So uh, when you try to reach for that small LN2 pot during a session, you can easily hit like the 24 pin uh, power cables on the motherboard with your firmus. It's kind of annoying. So uh, it's a lot more convenient to pour LN2 to a relatively tall pot like this. So uh, all until now, the only like very suitable memory pot and heat sinks were mainly designed by uh, bits power for like A2 PCP Samsung B die based sticks because there's a big issue related to uh, memory heat sinks for these uh, A2 PCP sticks. So if we compare an A0 PCP and A2 PCP memory uh, stick side by side, we can quickly note that on A, it's hard to focus, but you can fully see so on A2 PCB, which is on the right, uh, on this image right now, the memory chips are a little bit closer to the golden contact pads of the memory sticks compared to the older PCB design. And that poses an issue with the more standard custom memory heatsinks. So if you run the very standard memory heatsinks on those A2 PCB sticks, it can easily happen that the memory heatsink will not cover the chips entirely. So like one, one quarter of the memory chips will be uh, just exposed to the thin air. So uh, that's not very optimal. So that's why uh, new heatsinks are required. If you want to run like uh, Samsung A2 PCB, Samsung BDI sticks on LN2, or if you just want to use custom heatsinks on A2 PCB, DDR4 memory sticks overall. So these new custom ones are a little bit taller than the older one. So the, if you, it really depends on what kind of memory you want to run on LN2. If you want to run the more standard DDR3 uh, uh, memory sticks on LN2, like power chip based ones or LPDA hypers or LPDA PBSEs, I would really recommend, I, could, I can happily recommend these more standard ones from Barts. They have very good pressure on the memory sticks and yeah, they are made out of copper so they don't change the temperature that fast and well, the, the biggest thing about this is the pressure. So these ones are, these are specially tuned for double-sided power chip or LPDA hyper-based memories. So uh, these I think these cost like 50 euros a pair on barkedstore.com. So these are very good, but these will not fit the new PCB type when it comes to DDR4 memories. So that's why I had to get these newer ones. Now I just don't remember the price of these new ones, but they shouldn't be that expensive. The Honeycomb memory LN2 container itself costs around like 125 euros on barkedstore.com. So it's quite expensive for a memory LN2 container and the cheaper one, the Eco bot costs, I think 80 euros. So the Honeycomb is 50% more expensive than the Eco version. So uh, yeah, it's not cheap. So there are like multiple options available. The Pitch Power pot is relatively expensive as well. So it's not very cheap. 
you can get these standard ones like this one over here or the EKS S3D triple point Evo for a few dozen euros. So it really depends on what you want to run. So uh, in today's video we will, we will be insulating these uh, new G-Skill Riptos 5s 4266 cas 17 dual-sided Samsung B-Dye A2 PCP sticks with Vaseline. So we will just cover the areas around the memory chips in Vaseline so that they are insulated. So if any condensation forms around the memory chips, they will not, that will not cause any issues. And after covering the uh, PCP in Vaseline, we will just cover the surfaces of the memory chips as well as the golden contact pads as we want to use thermal paste between the memory chips and the custom heat sinks. The only case where you have to use a thermal pad is that if you run single-sided memory sticks on, I mean with these custom heat sinks, like if we use this uh, old and now dead A0 PCB memory stick as an example, this one has eight one gigabyte memory chips on one side, but the other side is completely blank. So there are no memory chips at all on this side. So here you have to use like a sheet of thermal pad so that it, the overall pressure of the memory heatsink will be uh, uh, will be like adequate. And I would recommend you use like one millimeter thick, maybe one and a half millimeter thick thermal pad on this side over here. So that's one example where the GP Ultimate from Jelly Solutions can be very handy or like or one, other, one another option would be like a, a thermal grizzly minus pad but really the thermal conductivity doesn't have to be the utmost best between blank PCP and a heatsink so it's the same so I think any thick enough thermal pad will do just fine. So uh, I think that's, a, that's mainly the plan. So we will use a high performance thermal paste between the chips and the heat sinks. So in uh, my example, I will be using Kimping Cooling KPX, but you can use any high performance thermal paste you wish. But uh, I would just use something very, very good. And then you can just forget the whole thing after that. So uh, we will remove the insulation from this old eco container and I will just swap the thermal pad from here to the honeycomb but first we will just cover we will do the same thing as with the original T-Rex we will first cover the areas that we want to insulate in electrical tape first then we will attach the thermal probe over here and then we will just touch uh, we will just make sure it doesn't uh, slip or doesn't get lost or, or doesn't get loose from that hole and then we will cover the top part of the memory pot with Arloflex 3 millimeters thick insulation tape. So it's insulated just like this container over here and I then I can sell this uh, RAM LN2 pot as I don't really have any use for it. So I think we can let, just get going. So uh, I think that's mainly the plan. So I think I will just uh, insulate the memory sticks off camera as it's easier to do and I can just show you the end situation or the finished product. So let's get going. Okay, so that's how the first side looks like. So the PCB has been covered in Vaseline and I cleaned the surfaces of the memory chips with just normal ethanol and CRC cleaner. And I added a line of KPX on top of every chip. I don't think it's necessary to spread the thermal paste in this case as you can accidentally uh, take some Vaseline off the PCB on top of the chips once again and when you put like adequate amount of the paste on top of every chip I think it should spread evenly from the pressure when you mount the heat sinks. So the first heatsink over there is ready to go. The mounting is a little bit tricky on the parked heatsinks as uh, there's just a normal nut on the other side of the memory heatsink that will uh, that will be used to tighten the memory heatsinks against each other. So I will just mount these and then we can look at the final thing. Now many would probably use like a heat gun or a hot air soldering station to melt the Vaseline around the chips. It's 
not fully necessary. I think this will do just fine, as many people don't even use any kind of insulation on the uh, memory sticks. Well, ice or snow doesn't really conduct electricity, so uh, the issue is really if you have to keep the memory sticks somewhere near like uh, zero degrees, where, where there's the biggest risk of uh, condensation water uh, forming up. So uh, yeah, so let's look at the final thing. Okay, this is definitely some messy business, but I got it done for now. So the memory heat sinks themselves, they really seem all right. They do have quite good pressure. It's not like absolutely perfect, but it's good. So I can still move the memory stick itself between the heat sinks if I really use a lot of force over here, but it's still a much better result than what I had with those EK SF3D memory heat sinks or with the EK Monarchs. So overall, the pressure is definitely all right. The uh, one mistake I made or did with the other heatsink was that I didn't use any uh, thermal paste over here between the actual uh, uh, heatsink plates themselves. So it would be worth it to use a little bit of thermal paste over here, like between the screws before, before you uh, attach the heat sinks against each other. So it's the same. I did it with the other stick, but I didn't do it with the other one. But I think that will be just fine. And well, that's mainly that's mainly needed for if you are really going for full pot temperatures with the memory, like with power chip based DDR3 memories. But with these, we don't really uh, go that much colder than like minus 80. It really depends on the kit and only for some scenarios anyways. And I also finished the pot itself as well. So here you can see the finished situation with the honeycomb ram pot. So first I used just normal electrical tape. I covered the entire pot in electrical tape. Then I attached the K-type the thermocouple probe over here. And then I just put a single layer of three millimeters thick Armorflex insulation tape around the electrical tape. And why did I use electrical tape in the first place is that it's only it's only to make things easier if you need to peel off the insulation tape at some point. Because if you don't, it's very likely that this happens. So you can see the uh, when I try to remove the insulation tape, it just it just tears apart like this. So. Uh, it's very hard to get rid of all of these uh, insulation tape residues if you don't have electrical tape uh, as the first layer. If you use electrical tape or some other tape first before applying the insulation, you can just peel it all off by removing or by pulling the electrical tape. So it's the same. So this is the way I would do with any like any LN2 container, no matter if it's a CPU container, GPU container or a memory container like this. But yeah, so if you are interested in uh, getting some custom heat sinks for memory kits, then definitely check out the ones that are available from Bark Store, like the original ones for DDR3 sticks and the more standard PCP designs anyways, like those uh, original copper ones made for dual-sided power chips, PPSC sticks, LP the hypers and so on. And these should be listed at Bark Store very, very soon. They have been showed many times already on Barked Store's Facebook page. So definitely check out the Facebook page at least. And if you are interested in extreme memory overclocking, definitely check out this brand new honeycomb uh, memory pot from Barked Store as well. But yeah, so that's the way you install custom heat sinks on the memory sticks and how you insulate them and how you prepare everything to run memory sticks uh, below zero. So yeah, so if you like to see this video once again, then please uh, thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.